um, tonight we're going to resume the conversation that we started. Uh, for those of us that are not here, we started a conversation about salvation, what is, and just ways of, you know, understanding better. Um, Pastor Emmanuel, do you have any opening speech before we go on? So the, the way to make it work is, you know, we already started. Please send in your questions. Please don't wait. Um, um, don't wait for a special moment. Don't wait for us to go back and forth. We had questions that the uh, there were some questions we couldn't answer, so we could as well just drop them in. We're looking at the issues, the issue of salvation, just answering questions about salvation to help us understand um what Christ has done, what we have, how to access it. And um, typically engage it the best way we can. Um, so I'm going to please just give me a moment, please. Yes, I'm going to open the floor. If anybody can remember, so what is salvation? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody want to share what stood out to you? What do you know about salvation from what we learned? What, what stood out to you? And then we'll pick it up from there. Over to you, um, Pastor Ima. Thank you, Ma. Um, I would say <laughs> um, I maybe the, int the interesting conversation first about how the topic started. Um, last week, that's one of the things that stood out to me. Um, and one of the things is I, I, I believe balance was brought. I like how um, the assurance of salvation was elevated or expanded upon that God will not throw us away. God will not forsake us. God is always available to take us back. Or, and the work he has done is not a work that can easily be undone. You know, um, it's not by every single mistake we make that we you can't just lose salvation like that or God threw you out of salvation like that. That it's a it's a it's a secure work on God's path. It is an eternal work on God's path. It's an eternal mm -hmm. work. It's an it's a it's a forever work. You know, a man just has the 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 only job man has is to plug in by faith. So I think that's one of the things that stood out to me. Um, but I'd like to hear from others what stood out to you um, um, from last week. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor Emma. Yeah, I think for me that was I, for people. Some people felt like you know the question we asked was, "Is that is it once saved forever saved? Is that is that the concept?" And I know for some people it was you know sometimes we just want a yes or no and black and white kind of conversation like Pastor Man Ma said I think I love the fact that we had balance we had um, conversations and the work of Christ was elevated above all else okay um for anyone in the house please we're getting started what stood out to you um salvation is a gift given to us by God that we receive by believing that God sent his son to die for us and I was using on the third day Salvation is not something we get by our works or we constantly need to also for. It is done and is different from sanctification. Salvation is being saved and from eternal damnation and being consigned to Christ. I also learned that it is a finished work on God's part. Nothing or no one can tamper with it. So good. Anybody else? So we can start training the questions. I know there were some questions we couldn't answer. We didn't have time to answer. Um, so we're going to start from where we stopped and then we'll please... Feeling, um, I love the way the student was used to explain itself. Ginger to go deeper into Bible study. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Um, what did you pick up from last week before we dive in any further? What what stood out for you as we explore the concept of salvation? For me, I think another thing for me was how salvation, the idea, the holistic understanding of what salvation is, impacts impacts our identity impact how we see ourselves impact how we view ourselves and what we what what we do with that so i think that was really good 
that was good um for me okay so if you don't speak i'm going to just call us at random anybody else anybody else you can unmute your mic if you want just let us a re quick recap from what you learned as we started this conversation anybody else can you hear me okay claire go ahead Okay, so we also talked a little bit about, you know, the book of James and um, whether James was saying it's about works or if it, you know, salvation can be maintained through our works or if it's just by faith. And, you know, we talked a little bit. And today I read, you know, the book and somehow I had more insights to understand that James was speaking towards the Christians who already had salvation. And we're saying that the our work should be evidence of our salvation. We can't just by mouth say that we are saved. There has to be evidence in our the ways we interact with people, the ways we interact with the world around us. We need to show the fruits that we, we say that we have. And in that time, they said that um, they would usually use about three years to really gauge a person after the person says that they've received Christ to gauge the person's character, the person's business, how the person, whether the person is a trouble causer or not, to really see if this person is truly a Christian. So it's not just in the one second that they said, oh, I'm Christian. Um, so I learned that truly um, we use scripture to gauge scripture. We don't just isolate certain scriptures and say, oh, this is mm. what the Bible said about one thing. We actually have to look into the history. Who was this? person talking to who what was this about to be able to truly understand scripture when we read it yeah thank you so much and today we can even look at some of the scripture people that are the way for you can lose salvation um you can you can gain salvation you can lose salvation and i think it's so powerful um um Hello, guys. So it's my first time here. And my question is, how does rejecting your life to God play with one save, always save salvation? Okay, thank you so much. We'll go into that. I love it. And this will encourage all of us that a lot of things that we are arguing about is just showing that we all are not engaging and being adequate students of the word. You know what I mean? Because some of these things that we are discussing and we are arguing and we are saying and we are, oh, forever saved something something it's just a case of understanding using scripture to explain scripture yeah we thank you so much but i would love so we get to you know see okay cool 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 now, someone is saying here, and it's interesting, we said it as well. I mean, we do it in church. If you want to dedicate your life to Christ. Anybody want to take this question on before? Pastor Emmanuel, anybody? She's, the person is asking, how does rededication your life to God play with the one saved, always saved salvation? Now, first, what we came up with, you know, exploring the issue of salvation is there are scriptures that that is not a always saved, once saved, forever saved. It's not a yes or no situation so we dissection into two parts on the part of god is an eternal security is an eternal work he has done whoever accepts christ and does not renounce christ you have received christ so and we explain that a christian my sin does not make a christian a sinner does it mean that that salvation you've, you you had or that renounce that um break away from the nature of sin is now back because of that sin you made, all right? However, if you don't engage, and that's what we said, there's a difference between salvation and sanctification, all right? If we don't if we don't understand these things, all right? So salvation is act of being saved from sin and its consequences, including spiritual death. Sanctification is the process of becoming more like Christ and growing in holiness after salvation. It's not a one-time event, but an ongoing thing. Salvation is a one-time event, okay? It's one time you've engaged it, you know, and all of that. Okay. So, however, if you don't steward and engage in that continuous process of sanctification, you can enter into the state of spiritual deadness. And from there, God forbid, people have 
people we, we, and we've seen it happen a lot of people just wake up today i'm renouncing i'm no longer a christian on that ground did we agree that a person comes to renounce him from being a christian saying that christ i don't believe in christ i don't believe in what state christ has done please the question is is the person still saved if i can go on to this question a person that renounces his faith and say, I'm no longer a Christian. I don't believe in the Christian practice. We saw a lot of that in the last two, three years. People that have written great books. People that have done ministry, pastors, all manner of things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, <laughs> all right, let's go. So the question is, is that person still saved? Anybody want to go? Pastor Emmanuel. Anybody want to go? Um, um, Brother Henry has gone. He said, Salvi, no. Um, Sister Duny also says, no. Um, no. Um, okay. So we think, agree that. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I think it's a consensus, no. I think God loves us, or God has made man, um, he wants man to be a heir. So he has given man the ability to choose. No matter how beautiful the choice is, God wants us to choose him, you know, so. Okay, thank you so much. So we've agreed. So based on that, if we then come to church and say, is it a, if you want to rededicate your life to Christ? So I think, like I said, looking at it scripturally, anybody, what does that mean? Um, so my, my thought on rededication is as far as, so there are two sides. I think we touched a bit mm. on, on it last week. First, where, when someone feels that every single mistake, he needs to come and re rededicate, there might be an issue with the person's assurance of salvation. So mm. that, 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 that might need to be handled, that. Look, mm -hmm. don't let the enemy condemn you to always feel that because you made a mistake, because you didn't pray here or you didn't fast here, you've lost your salvation and you always need to come out, you know, so there might be an issue. But is the general act of the dedication wrong? Uh, um, to me, I would say no, because the right. dedication can be um, an act. You know, the Bible says confess your sins one to another. It can be a yes. step that. Although I am saved, I've not been taking salvation seriously. So I'm working out as to identify with salvation again and to make a commitment to take salvation seriously. Um, you know, Paul says that, so that in that sense, I don't believe it is wrong. So if the person's heart is that, oh, not just because of a, a, an occasional mistake or one-time mistake he knows that consistently for a long time he has not he has not been plugging into what god has done and he wants to make a renewed commitment in front of the saints that now i want to be committed number two i need help because i think when people are come up for rededication they are also saying i need help i need a brother to help me up i need a church to work with me so in that case i don't feel it's bad Thank you so much. I think that answers it. And thank you. That puts a balance. So I we can boldly, eat anybody, whether in your church or ministry, you can boldly do that, all right? As a case of, you know, why are we doing it? We have answers. And we have scripture to back it up. Um, On the basis of, um, what's it called? Biblical, even though it's not, is rejecting one's life to Christ, generally, of course, after a person has accepted Jesus, but they feel it's straight, like he said. Now, while the Bible does not mention rededication sp specifically, but the theme of repentance and returning to faith are present. So, First John one nine. Anybody? First John one nine. I love that, and also the story of the prodigal son coming back home. So, there's a case of somebody coming back home. He didn't renounce his faith, but I think what's one of the things that stood out so strongly for me, Pastor Emmanuel, when you speak, is that confess to one another. I'm coming out to say. But if he's the, so that's the balance. So it has to be taught that when you're coming to rededicate your life, to, it's not a case of because I, I lied yesterday. I, I then tomorrow, again, next week again, maybe I did something. Then I always come out all the time to rededicate my life. Then there might be something wrong. Pastor Moji, I don't know if she's the best who can speak. If she can just share uh, <laughs> what happened to her on campus. 
where she was right. always coming out. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Pi. So I remember um back then in uni when I just just became born again. Um, every Sunday or every not Sunday, um, we used to have mini peace services. Um, if they call for an altar call, I was always coming out. Then every time I left school and came to Lagos, because every time I came home to Lagos, I used to sing plenty. Then I'll go back to school, come out, rededicate my life. So this was consistent. And one day my pastor, Pastor Paul, just called me and said, told me that I don't have to come out all the time, you know, to give my life to Christ or to rededicate my life to Christ back. Um, and I'll have a personal relationship with God so I can always go to him, you know, in my room, anywhere, you know, and ask for his forgiveness and his mercy, you know, confess my sins. But I don't have to, like, I've come out, I've given my life to Christ. I publicly declared him once, and that's fine. I don't have to keep to him. So that it was, yeah, right. then I stopped coming out all the time. So, yeah. So I think it has to even be taught generally so that people don't begin to feel, because some people argue that people coming out to give their life to Christ is not where the giving of their life to Christ. That's one step. What are the many ways for them to stay in faith? There was a statistics about the number of people that came out and the number of people that remain in faith. And it was it was like a nightmare. It's like night and day. I saw Pio and Claire's hand up. So we'll take you before we go to the next question. Pio. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. So um, the art of rededication is, um, like Pastor Emmanuel said, it's a bold declaration to leave your path. Sometimes I just like to go to dictionary definitions just so that it gives us a better understanding. It says the act of rededication is to denounce one's former way of living and commit to living fully for Christ. When someone rededicates, it is generally because they have separated or distanced themselves in the walk with the Lord and they or they are desiring to go deeper in their relationship with God. What this means is rededications can also be done in the private so when mm. we say we want to do it in the public as great as it is it does not make it less if you do it in the private and that is why for so someone good. like Mochi, um your pastor told you that you know what the art of what you want to do which is rededication is great and noble but it doesn't have to be a public declaration and this i also experienced when i gave my life to christ I kept coming out and, you know, depending on how intense the sermon are, you just feel the need of anytime your heart is moved towards grief, you feel that the response is that you come out to rededicate your life. But the solution to that is as you start to have a personal work, you now start to see that this relationship affords for reconciliation even immediately mm -hmm. when you sin. So um, those that usually come up frequently were people that, they are genuinely giving their life to Christ, but nobody had trained them in the art of walking. Mm -hmm. with God. So they felt that they always have to go out to show that God do. Remember that time I came out because I took you serious. Now I'm taking you serious again. It doesn't have to be. Now, right. with that being said, who are the people that should still come out um, for rededication? Now, if your life has been one where you have in the days where you fail, you had also publicly promoted the things of the dark world. If you had publicly shown that you had aligned back to the things that you left, it is also important that you show that you are now back to Christ. And that yeah. helped from a sentimental point of view. I'll give you an example. If we all know that you smoke at the bus stop and you don't hide it, or everybody knows that you are a public nuisance. And this is not because you've never given your life to Christ before. If you want to rededicate, it's often advisable that you also come out so that you are also telling people that you have taken a new stance. While you can do wow. it in the private, and it will not be a bad idea, and it will be accepted by God, doing it in the public also alerts your environment that you have taken a bold step for God and that they should expect a change in your outcome or in your behavior. All right. Um, thank you so much. Somebody said, I was born in a Christian home and did things of God. And I didn't have an understanding. I logged up, but I didn't have a relationship. Later on, I had a better understanding. I rededicated my life. Rededication is okay. So now what we have done, 
is this what we do that we are used to doing religiously. I'm sure before, if they've asked some people, just say, hey, we don't rededicate now. Sometimes it sounds like it's a, for lack of, oh, if you don't come out to give your life to Christ, oh, yeah, rededicate us. Where are you? So there's a reason for it. Like what people said is so profound for those that are coming out to boldly, you know, like, you know what, I am renouncing um, things. Like you might not see it in scripture, like it said, but you can see it in First John 1, 9. The, the, you can see the theme. You can see the theme in prodigal son coming back to the father. He didn't, he didn't come quietly. He came publicly and the father publicly also celebrated him back. You get what I mean? You know, and there's that part of confessing to one another. So um, that's the answer. I believe we've done justice to that question. Now, any other question? Any other question? Let's let's get it moving. Can they renew their salvation? They have a change of heart. I think that is still connected to the rededication of the, the rededication question. Okay. Or if, if it's not, please, can you um explain further? Any other question, anyone? Basema? Over to you. Is there anything on your heart as regards what you said before we, we move on again? I have a you know, question. I think All there's right, a, one more question. She said, is there a room for mercy for those who commit blasphemy? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go to that scripture. So we, because I think it's from a scripture. Um, if, if, if you sin against the Holy Spirit, um, let, let me see if I can find that scripture just quick. Okay. Sorry. But uh, um, I think it's um, just a second. Uh, Matthew, Matthew 12, 12 tw 32 and Mark 3, 29. Okay. So let me, let me read it out. It says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy Blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Um, so if you look at this context, they were saying that Jesus was that the actions of Jesus were was by the um, demons. That G D Jesus was essentially casting out demons by Your the spirit contact. of the devil. Mm. So they were equating the works of God to the works of the enemy. So these people could see the works of God. And when they saw the works of God, they were calling it the works of the devil. Instead of acknowledging that these works were good works, they were saying it was bad work, you know. So there has always been um, a misconception or a, yeah. an argument about yeah. what is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Now, what I understand about it, what I understand about it, and I'm still open to more insight, is when Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit in the book of John, he tells you that he, he will come, when he comes, he will not speak of himself. He says he will testify, he will take mm. from the Father and the Son, and he will make known to me. So, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy mm. Spirit is the one that reveals the nature of God. Is the one that reveals Jesus to man. Without the Holy Spirit, man cannot see who God is, or man cannot know who, who Jesus is. He says no one can know the things of a man except by the Spirit of the man. And no one knows the things of God except by the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit is the channel through which God brings salvation to man. If a man rejects that channel, there's no option for the man to be saved again. That's the way I understand it. it doesn't, mm. It's not a literal confession. Like these people Jesus was talking to, they never said that the Holy Spirit is a fool or the Holy Spirit is an idiot. What they did is that they saw a revelation of God and rejected that revelation. So what I understand from it, blasphemy of the, against the Holy Spirit is that when the Holy Spirit comes to reveal who God is to you and you reject it, God is trying to save you through that instrument, through that channel, through that river, and you reject it, there is no option for you. But for those who are in Christ Jesus, so maybe in your error, you spoke against speaking in tongues, you spoke against... Um, 
um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or you maybe only said something that is not the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It is when the God is trying to bring salvation to man, and man looks at salvation and rejects it. So the book of Hebrews, according to my understanding, sheds more light on this. It says those who are tasted of the powers of the age to come. Let me see if I can get that. It's in Hebrews. And it says Which one they is that? Turn back. It's in Hebrews. It says that he, Christ cannot be crucified again. It says those who have tasted of the powers of the age who uh, sorry have tasted tasted of the heavenly gift. Yes. Hebrew, yes, Hebrews 6 4. Hebrews 6 4. Yes. So you see what I feel blasphemy or, or against the Holy Spirit is. So, um, yes, it says, for it is impossible for those who were, who were once enlightened, having tasted of the Holy Heavenly Gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. This is what I believe is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Where a man consciously sees the works of God. I remember when God was saying this, he wasn't talking to the Gentiles. He wasn't talking to, he wasn't talking to the Gentiles. He wasn't talking to mm. even the laymen. He was talking to Pharisees. That so knew good. He was talking to Pharisees that knew the scriptures. Some of them, they even knew that, see, Nicodemus knew that he was from God. He came at uh. night to meet him. Nicodemus, and there are many Pharisees. The book of John says that there are a lot of Pharisees that knew Jesus was from God, especially when he raised Lazarus from the dead. But they did not want to be seen with him. Seen because of in the, the day to lose their title. Because they will lose their title. So when a man comes to active consciousness, he's not guessing, he knows. But because of something, he's rejecting the word of God and he turns back to it consciously, actively. And it that man is blaspheming against the work of the Holy Spirit. But how do, is it something, a man that, that man, in that state, that man cannot repent. It's not like God, if he asks for repentance, God will reject him. Because scriptures balance scripture. He says no one yes. will he reject yes. if he calls for mercy. There's no one that will ask for mercy and God will reject him. So that man will take himself to a state where he will not want mercy. He will be, his heart is hard like the heart of Pharaoh. Like, Pharaoh blasphemed against the Holy Spirit in quotes because he knew the works he was shown. God showed him. He knew clearly that it was God. All the, like God drove him to a place with so much revelation and that Pharaoh did not have any excuse to say this is not God. Like mm. even his, his, um, his magician says this is the finger of God. By the fourth plague. So Pharaoh openly saw without doubt, without anything, he knew it was God, but he, he, he had gotten to a state that he could not repent. He has gotten to a state of blasphemy. That man cannot um, repent. So that's what I Thank believe. you so much. Thank you so much. Another example could be, um, like, again, there are a lot of theological, you're right, debate about it. Um, some people, based on their doctrine, believe, oh, you can't be... But again, I always believe you scripture to read scripture. When you said context was very important, who was it speaking to? What was the context? They saw what Christ was doing and just, same way, right? However, you know, what is interesting is that God, the, the overarching theme of scripture, the love of God, the grace of God. So if you use that to interpret. Now, if you look at Paul, Paul, he could have seen, but Paul believed what he was doing was God. He was out. These people are against God, but see, he was saved. Now, if you come to our present days, there were people that were Muslims. I, I saw a video of a man that he, 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 he felt he killed a guy. They stoned him and left him to die because they said it's they, are, they were raised to hate believers that you are all infidels. That they were, This thing cannot be of God. Even though there's a part of the Quran that said X, Y, Z. What am I saying? But some of these guys were eventually saved and they come to faith. So it shows us that it, but again, the idea is that there's a place that the light will come. Will you respond to it? The light will come. Will you respond to it? But when a believer deliberately, like Pastor Emmanuel said, they were Pharisees. 
you can see clearly that this is God. As long as what happened is jealousy. If you look at the Pharisees, they were jealous. Jealousy, envy, control created a refusal that that is of God. And sometimes if that is the case, you are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit and you have put yourself again as an enemy of the Spirit of God. But I believe that repentance can all, like God does not desire that any man perishes. That is an overarching truth. So it's just that what will you do with that? It will keep, you know, light, illumination, things keep coming to you. What will you do with it? And we have scriptures, all, all, later through scriptures are people that we don't think they deserve mercy, that they came back. Later through, look at, <laughs> look at Nebuchadnezzar when he was done to an animal and he came, you know, just different human beings and even our present day, people that have done crazy things, killed people, done all manner of things and they still came to faith. So we see that scripture can always balance itself. Thank you so much for that. Um, I see P.O.'s and and then Aka. Yeah, so maybe Aka can speak. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Oh, yeah, Aka, um, Aka, go ahead. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, everybody. Um, what past everything that Pastor Emmanuel said was just amazing. Um, really, really, really deep insight. Um, but for me, I mean, um, I would like to say add that you know from the book that I read from Kenneth Hagin, and I know some people ask these questions because of also fear that they may have fallen into the same. Maybe they've done this and they don't know, but you know, um, one of the things that Kenneth Hagin said was you know assuring us that for us to even be in that place where we're asking have i have i not it means you have not you know um, uh, whenever people seen this scene it they, they do it with their whole chest they are aware <laughs> like you know and he said in his entire 50 something 60 something years of ministry only saw two people that it happened to um apart from people who you know have a revelation of god it's people essentially who have an experience a relationship with god and then wholeheartedly turn their back on god and say you know what mm -hmm. the woman who was born again she fell off they were trying to still save her and win her back and he was praying for her one day he went into a hotel room where she was with someone and, and she was taking drugs and he called her and said jesus loves you and she said to hell with that man called jesus mm -hmm. And that was when the Holy Spirit told him, it's done. Like, it can't happen anymore. You know, so she knew God. She was born again, you know. And it, I feel like also even there are some times when we hear of people that just decidedly choose. They know there is God, there is Satan. They've now chosen. You know what? I choose to go with Satan. I prefer to have money on this earth and live my life. And then at the end, go to hell. I don't mind. Those are people who have actually turned their back on the Holy Spirit, like Pastor Emmanuel said, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. When people have had an experience of Jesus and it's now saying, you know what, I don't want it again. And, and this is not people who backslid or went into sinning and they are finding it hard to keep up. No, they just said, this Christian work, I don't even want to do religion anymore. I don't want, I, I don't want to enter holies of holies anymore. Yeah. That's sure. it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I would like to add that and just quickly answer this and we'll go on. What do you think lead people to that space? It doesn't happen overnight. What do you think lead people to like there was this guy? Apparently, I didn't read the book. I heard that there are um people who there's this particular popular marriage. I think the five lang love language, I don't even know. There's this popular relationship guy for decades. That came out last year or two years ago to renounce his faith that he's no longer Christian. And we see a lot of that happening. What did you say? Is it Joshua Harris? I, I don't know his name, but I know he's a very popular. And just give you an example of people like, like that, that they've people. done, they've done some great stuff and they come out and they don't want not to, and all of those things. What do we think? Is it Joshua Harris? Okay, thank you, sir. What do we think? Um um, well, somebody was saying that that video clear that is it possible we're doing it for optics as well because now we don't even know which one is which one now because when people see camera they say anything and they do anything but but that was also an example they say they didn't know that there's Evan because you see that's where the work our work is but what do we think gets people to that point I would dare say number one is disappointment that then can lead to resentment Fueled by unrealistic or 
misplaced expectations. And that is my concern for every gospel that takes an aspect of the gospel to make the full gospel. So come to Jesus, all your problem go away, pray Ada, and um, you get more money. Do this, do that. That is my concern for those kind of things because there was a lady that lost her baby or she had a miscarriage and she was quoting some of these popular sayings that we say and she said, they be, I've been joining this place. We've been praying the same thing. What about me? And that's another kettle of fish. But anybody want to ask that? That is why as a church, when we get on to the place of joy, we're going to identify the, the little foxes. If you don't deal with the issue of disappointment, expose it to the truth of God, offense, but really majorly disappointed and not being rooted and grounded in the word. Matthew 13, that when the word comes, it just lands on the surface. There's no root. And the way you know is root is issues will expose you. And it, God forbid you are now even blinded. You don't see. So, so you see disappointment, uh, misplaced expectation of what God has said. What God has said to me. What somebody has prophesied to me. Um, and it creates resentment. It has a way. Or the worst one, when your gifts are your drivers and not the word of God. Let me explain. There are people, their gifts made them, extended them beyond their level of capacity. So they are gifting, they are so, they are prophetic, they are great authors, they are writing, they are speakers, and they are going everywhere speaking. Because I saw a video recently too of a number of people that are in the Christian something, um, music in the West. And a lot of them are always talking about, and one is releasing book, you know, when I was getting my loudest ovation was when I was having the, the kidney called lowest. And I said, somebody, it's almost like a pattern where almost I said that, oh, you know, when you go out there and someone said to me, this is an issue of roots. Are you rooted? Because some people get the gift, place them on, on platforms, places that are not prepared for, or they're not rooted for. So it exposes them. And then before you know it, they are all the manner, all manner of things are attached to them. Another thing is lost. You're right. Lost. So an example is there are certain people that what they wanted was Grammys. They love music so much. They love music more than God. Guess what? Um, the pastors were having a conversation. I was just, you know, just reviewing things. And P.O. said something very powerful. And we're like, we're going to get that. It's a power we talk about community is that if you love community more than Christ, guess what? You will pick community over Christ when push comes to show. Anything you love more than Christ. So as much as why community church, we want you community, yeah. I, I'm a, and that's why, for instance, we're talking about cell. You see, for some people who struggle with the idea of cell, we're pushing, go out and preach the gospel because in the first place for you, cell was just, you know, us, let's commune. And guess what? Lando Suprada, Ia Kastufrede. And this is just stirred up in my spirit. The devil has no problem with us building community as long as we're replacing it as what the gospel is. As long as community is not, is not the means, is the end. So the devil, so for some of us, it's community. Some people, is outreach. And that's why some people get angry and say the church is not a social gospel. So some people, it's just about charity. Keep doing it as long you are not preaching the gospel, you are not engaging in sanctification. Salvation is at the burner, it's not on the burner, it's at the back end. So, what happens is those things, if that is what it is, when life comes, you realize that you probably really did not know God or have a deep root. And I just thought it was important to bring out that people don't just now just come and renounce Christ overnight. Some things have been happening in their hearts. Things have been shifting. Things has been happening. All right. I hope I've answered that too, so that we don't dig digress too much. So anybody, you understand my voice. Don't just, it is where, hmm, process, name it, seek counsel. If you need um, uh, therapy, seek, don't be quiet. I feel this way. You know, I, you know, keep having conversations with God. Stay in the word. Declare the truth of God's word over your reality. 
please don't because you will just wake up god forbid you realize that your enemy is inside the canal you've gone so far from the from the asian landmark you've gone you've gone so far away from it some people um they say it's because of what people did they saw it, their pastor abuse people and they say this god is fake again your salvation was in was by man and not god okay so let's go back to salvation any other question that we have about this issue of salvation i was thinking about it so this is a bit i don't know if i want but let's straight out so based on this issue of somebody gives their life to christ hmm but the person is struggling with a sin. It's no longer his person is living in sin. How do we relate that with the concept of salvation? Be, what I'm saying, an example, with this whole gender issue. So now we have people. They say they are gay pastors, and I saw a video recently. I say you cannot be a gay pastor. You cannot be a pastor for sins. And the guy said, "Is I said that I'm a pastor for fornicators, or I'm a." adulterous adult adult adulterous pastor what is our thoughts on such now it's not to pick one scene above but this is one prevailing thing that we're being faced with now we have gay churches we have gay pastors we have you know all this manner of things going on so if somebody and the reason why this is people ask you so now if someone confronts you because people have we spoke about last week uh, on tuesday on wednesday People have said, why should they believe that if you are saved by Christ, you don't need to confess any sin again because you why are you confessing? God forgive me. You have been forgiven already and you have salvation. We've dealt with that last week. We've dealt with this for once day forever saved. So you can speak. We've talked with it. Why are people rededicating their lives? We can deal with it. It's not for you to receive salvation again. We have so what about this issue? All right. What do we is it possible? How do we misconcern the issue of salvation? Because there's also the extreme that people tell people struggling with sexuality that they are not born again. So let's start with that. Because somebody is dealing with their, is struggling with the issue of sexuality, maybe same sex attraction, does that mean the person is not born again? Anybody? I think you want to say something about uh, blasphemy. Yeah, to sorry, and boy, I, I asked him, I, I don't think he wanted to go on again. Oh, yes, I think I think um, a lot of us had, had mentioned that, but um, what um, um, Pastor Brother Ivano, uh, Brother Aka said is true. See, the moment you still have a conscience, you have not entered into the realm of blasphemy. Um, mm. There are people that they are on the path. You know, the Bible talks about they have seared their heart with hot iron. And those are the people that eventually they enter into this very narrow scope. They are the people that, though they know God and they believe God, they choose not to acknowledge him as God. And there are people like that. It's sad, you know, but they exist. But the moment you, that you are still checking, hey, hope I've not, your heart is still good. And like they said, the only person that may I believe cannot still find forgiveness if he is genuine, is the devil, because his time is up. But as long as you're on earth, you will still be able to find forgiveness. The people that, 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 that the Bible is talking about in terms of blasphemy that cannot be forgiven are people that they still hold that position, that God is not God. The Holy Spirit is a lie. And they still yeah. want to now still get um, 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 into the into the what's it called into salvation that's what happened mm. yeah. i love what Aka said here Aka said please if you are someone if you or someone backslide it's still not a sin against the holy spirit a major ingredient in this is hate for god after knowing him. absolutely yes. if you don't hate god you are recover you are recoverable always and only one percent of christians in the world fall into this is extremely extremely rare hold your assurance in your hand so good old your as and also god does not desire for anyone to go to hell it's not made for humans yes god did not desire and that's why he will go out of his way and all so um so moji said to that question i asked i feel they haven't surrendered that part of their life to jesus so i'm saying so that because people have seen a lot of conversations and they swing both ways and i have been so burdened about this issue of sexuality and i feel like as a church as a people we must have 
we must have not just emotional responses to it. We must be able to stand by what scripture says. But at the same time, we are so, you know, when we say love people, I've seen people that have struggled and they are now strong. And they said, there's a guy that said, they, I was loved in my church. I, I found love. They didn't, con they didn't compromise their stance, but they loved me. And it's always that thin line. And why am I bringing this up? Because there have been cases where people say that people that say that they are one thing or that they are not saved. Are they born again? I know it's a tough one. Aka, go ahead. So oh, come again. I didn't even get the question. Sorry. I no, I'm saying that for those that are saying, I saw a video of saying I'm a gay pastor, I'm a trans pastor, whatever, you know, you know, that all those things. And the guy is saying that we can't create a ministry and pastorship for sins. I'm saying that I'm a I'm a he said is I saying I'm a fornicator, I'm a fornicating pastor. That will you will you yeah. will you be okay with that? So where that is I that mean, on one I hand? What do you say? Yeah, you, it's it's a bit of an oxymoron. You you can't you mm. can't have Christ and also say that you do not acknowledge the things that Christ has said. He doesn't stand for. It's it's part of the hybridness that God does not endorse. Yes, so God loves he, them. They can read the Bible. They can actually have a strong command of the knowledge of the Bible. For but you see, for as long as the Bible is not in totality for them, they cannot say because a pastor believes in the totality of Scripture. If you cannot believe in the totality of Scripture, then it, yeah. it it puts your pastorship to a close because if somebody brings you there, what are you going to say about that part of the Scripture? Oh, it's archaic. Oh. New Revelation says that no homosexuals are mm. that. The creator did not make semi-male, semi-female. He made it male and female. So you don't understand that the in and especially in places like the Americas where Christianity does not have a very strong protocol. Everybody can call it what it is. And they and can feel, I must dare say in Nigeria too, because there's a strong and, yes, yeah. Action. So it's I, I let's even be honest, it's a religion that people can coin to whatever they like. Yes, as sir. against places like Islam, where they are very, very strong on, you know. So it's something that people coin to what they want. And these are the things that come after that. All right. Okay, so thank you so much, Pio. So someone is saying that, that to be honest, they may be born again. So for instance, is this a case of when you is like you are choosing to live in sin. Is this does this I won't say count for black fame, but is this on a path of you are choosing to say, I ref this is no sin, but I've given my life to Christ. But this is no sin. Because beyond even sexuality, there are people that are, that are believers that don't believe that sex before my I don't know where that that is now a thing now. So can we pick sin and say, I'm born again, no, but this sin. Is not a sin, or this is not, you know. So, okay, let us see hands up. Um, so let's go with I'll go with Claire. I can now come to Pastor Manu. All right, Claire. Okay, so one thing that we know from the very beginning, Genesis, the devil will come with the truth, but he will not give you the full truth. He will tell you some things and make and obviously lie in some things. And I think that that's what's happening with these people. They don't want to accept the full Bible. They want to accept the one that satisfies the idols of their heart. And so uh -huh. finding some of these people is their need to be relevant or their need to acquire wealth or something on this earth. And so the, or obviously maybe even lost. And so because of that thing that they have elevated above the name of God, they, they have sat on that and they've allowed the devil to sell them this idea that they are okay Without, and I think just like Pio said, this is how doctrines are born. You find people mm. that isolate themselves away from the from the church, or isolate themselves from the truth, from the Bible, and they select certain things. When we were in Rema, they taught us about different doctrines. You know, um, the um, what's it called? Origin. Witnesses. I've forgotten. Jehovah Witnesses. Um, um, Seven Advent Church. How some of them took certain things from the Bible, they took certain things from, from Christianity 
and then went and just like how the devil will do things, mm. avert it. And so I think that this is just a reflection of one of it. Mm. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Okay. All right. Because one of the things we saw is that you can't really come into salvation. You can't, you, you, you are saved. San salvation and sanctification are like different sides of a coin, right? Though you are saved. I have a very important question someone just asked, and I'll ask it. But let's go to um, Aka, Pastor Emmanuel, and then, yeah. Thank you, PI. Um, I'd like to say yes, this. That that moment. To Square, sorry. Yes, to address issues like this, I think that it's a very, very important thing for people to realize and for us to understand that most people accept salvation and are cool with the, sal with the concept of salvation as security, but not salvation as identity. Um, and that's when you fall into problems like hold this. Hold on, hold on. Almost like, so that I don't go to hell. Since you said that all I need to go to heaven is to be saved. Uh, yes. But um, salvation is also an identity, an identity badge. It is identity. Um, you cannot take the name of God and put it in your own terms. It's either you take his name. For example, my wife, she took my name under the terms of the governing law. There is a law. There is a way to change that process. You can't just say, so she cannot say she's Nani Alfredo. No, you can't add anything to my name, to the <laughs> name Nani. She <laughs> declared Nani Alfredo. No, it is Nani. And that is the identity that people must understand that when they become born again. So you cannot be a gay Christian, talk less of a gay pastor. In fact, when you say you are a gay pastor, they were now entered into false prophet, somebody that is in under this influence of the mm -hmm. spirit of lust and seduction, or rather the lying spirit. You are being a tool for leading people into the wolves. You are just a wolf. But you can be a Christian struggling with the, homose the homosexual sin, the sin of homosexuality. Right. You can be a Christian struggling, but once you accept that you are a prefix, a gay Christian, a fornicating mm. Christian, a lying Christian, then your identity is thwarted. That means that mm. you have accepted somebody else or something else as who you essentially are. But if you say, no, it's not who I am. I am in God. And you are struggling. You will walk towards salvation. You will begin to grow and you will begin be getting closer to God in changing into his image little by little, procedurally. But when people put a stamp, they close the door for God to change mm. their life and transform mm. their life. They put mm. a stamp. And salvation is not on our terms. It is on God's terms. And God forbid, I'm thinking, if people remain in that stance, while we know that this unpardonable thing, you can mm. enter that error. Yes. And, and you now reject and begin to blaspheme mm -hmm. because what is happening mm -hmm. now, for instance, there's a new Bible where they are changing the gender thing. So we are seeing, even though maybe in the day of Kene again, blaspheme, no reach like this, but people are it's beginning true. to accost the name of the Lord and changing things and raising things. And that is why as believers, we must understand salvation Yes. So we can engage people, right? Love what I love. Lo and that's the crux of this core value. That salvation births identity, not just security. It births identity, not just security. That is so good. Yeah. All right, Claire, and I'll go to Pastor. Yeah. No, sorry, I've put my hand down. <laughs> okay, I put your hand down. So good. Like my husband has finished it. Let me explain. And for anybody struggling, if you know someone struggling with sexuality, one of the breakthroughs the Lord gave in my mind when I was thinking about it years ago was that, you know, the church would say, oh, the feelings will go. No, it was not. It was never about the feelings going. Because, please, married men, I do not. Have you ever seen another woman that is not your wife? And you're like, wow. And you, you took your discipline to, you, had, you took your eyes away. Married men. I, Have you been naked? I yes, sir. See if somebody like, I was yes. listening to okay. Apostle Arome today. If Apostle Arome in his height of heights <laughs> was saying in his sermon that he went to Calabar and he saw the kingdom on the street, he ran back to his room. His body was shaking. He was vibrating. I said, Ah, is this man that is that does a prayer for ten hours? He's feeling this feeling still. 
then that means that it is not in the feeling. So a gay person can have those feelings and struggle with those things, and but it does not mean that the identity is lost. So Absolutely. it's just like Pastor Absolutely. Reverend Tok said, because you cook, does that make you a cook? If you a drive chef. to pick your daughter from school, does that make you a driver? Driving is not your profession. So oh, sin be your you. profession. Not say if you can if you do not say, oh, this is who I am. You should not attach what you do to who you are. But people do, and that's where they fall into the problem of so good. painful acts to their can, identity. Can I even just check in some things? Go Thank ahead, you so much. Okay. See, the word gay is actually an identity. The word homosexual is not just a word, it's also an identity. And that is why what we tell people is do not take up that identity. Understand that there can be a struggle, but don't take it up. Don't say I'm a homo. Mm -mm. Don't say I am gay. No. I can struggle with homosexuality. I might struggle with the loss of, of same-sex partner. But, but I am not. If there is anything that you say you are, because the word I am, the real origin is from God. I am oh. that I am. So when you say anything and you back it with I am, um, there is a declarative uh, 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 um, uh, ability inside of you that makes your spirit conform to that thing that you said you are. So even mm. when I struggled with masturbation, I was not a masturbator. It was a mm. struggle. So the day identity of I am born again started to rise stronger, that that was trying to impose an identity on me died. Mm. Uh, we can't hear you again. You don't finish. That's it. He has finished. That's oh, no. Yes. Finished. Oh, right. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I mean, that's so good. And that was the breakthrough the Lord gave me. That the church will teach people. I, I, when I see people that, I tell them, listen, it's the same way I don't want to, I, I don't want to, I don't want to lie. It's the same way that, you see, you think it's uh, uh, be alive. Go and meet some people that they are, it's as if the, the, the enemy has put a lying tongue. Their tongue is default. They don't even think it's, do you understand? Meet somebody, a married man, someone that is trying to stay faithful to his wife. And and I saw that that was a break because a lot of them would say, but have prayed. And that was a frustration. I say, you know what? Maybe I am this. Because in the church trying to deal with it, maybe we didn't nuance it well. We didn't, we didn't explain this thing well. It is a, oh, no, just pray about it. Oh, just, just pray, pray, pray to go. No, no. The Bible says, if you, if you, if do, if you, what's that scripture? Please, and you not fulfill the loss of the flesh. If you sow into the spirit, you of the spirit reap. You sow into the flesh of corruption. There's another part that says, if you do Very not, there was something. Oh my God, it just escaped me now. Almost saying that if you, if you, you if you something something, you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. I think that's it. If you sow in the spirit, if you focus on the things of the word, if you, you will not fulfill. It's just a matter of time. All right, so Walk it's good that we put Walk in the spirit and you're not fulfilled. The rest Thank of you so much. What, where is that? Is in the book of Galatians, 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 Galatians. 5, 7, 16, I do. Thank you so much. If you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. If you walk in flesh, my darling, this spirit and body will forever be at, they'll be at war. I've seen people say they can never forgive. You don't understand what unforgiveness is to some people. Is their bet right? It, God forbid. It's not their bet right. Some people they they would rather. They, I've seen somebody. I was in a place. A person said, "I will not greet that person." I I thought it was a joke. And that's seen, you know. So, anyways, now somebody is asking here as we proceed. So, was are we saying that? Please, the only criteria. I have a question: Is salvation all we need to make heaven? Can we be guaranteed that we will make heavens, uh, heavens, sorry, heaven once we are saved? I say, Emmanuel, everybody. Yes. 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 Okay. So that is the answer. That is so. Again, that's why some people are angry that people are religious teachers because some growing up, we hear stuff like if you, it's almost like salvation and something. You can't just be saved alone. To you, you save alone. To go. I mean, if you remember that analogy of you are Ayaka super, you you are born again, then you're not seeing rapture not take place. <laughs> I may remember that analogy. 
That's mm -hmm. L, straight. So I think that created part of the anxiety for people about Evan. That, hey, because I've always wondered, are you saying that all this while that I've lived and, ah, I born again, I've lived, and maybe that time, done something, go help you, a salesman, in, in the presence of his customer. Now I went to go and ginger and say one thing, trumpet sound. Are you saying that, L? <laughs> but thanks be to God that that's not the case. Hallelujah. All right, Claire. I also wanted to add that there was also the time where, you know, people give their own revelation of visions of heaven where they'll say, oh, one woman was going to heaven. She had attachments on and so she did not make it. One woman, she Absolutely. did make up. So, oh, yeah, when earrings. So all those things just really honestly made people feel like, what can we actually even do to make this heaven? So good. So, hard. so good. Now that we yeah. understand Sorry. salvation. I okay, go ahead, sir. Just wanted to add something also. Um, like when you look at the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, the last servant was afraid of judgment. And I think I've said mm -hmm. it before. The reason why I buried this talent was to escape judgment. Yeah. That was if, if that it was that. And unfortunately, the burying of this talent in um attracted the judgment that he wasn't afraid, that he was afraid of. So it's about the man thinking of just wanting to escape hell. A man that is in a state of just wanting to escape hell is not in a good place. The Bible says in the book of John, it says that there is no more fear in judgment. He that is perfect in love would, it says, I don't know how to quote it exactly, but it says that he that has been perfected in love will not fear judgment because as he is, so are we. So what I'm just trying to say is there's also a danger of a man constantly living under fear because um, living under the fear of going to hell is not a healthy state for a believer so that's good. not God, the bible says in hebrews chapter 2 it says that he came to free us from the fear of death so when a man is living under the fear of going to hell fire he's living under bondage that's one of the things i'll say then um, secondly i don't know this is just my thought of Secondly, the truth of the matter is people <laughs> say that when men die, that the, the man will go to hell, then Satan will just be using knife to be choking him. I went to hell and I saw Satan choking knife to be using knife to be you know that there's no way in scriptures that says that. Just FYI. Yes, Most people got it from a play written by an unbeliever, Dante's allegory about the seven layers of hell. There's no part wow. that says that uh, when a man goes there, you see. Well, I don't expose them. <laughs> he, he, say, he says. He I says remember. That. I'll be crying, crying. Or oh, is it possible from the parable of the of the rich man and Lazarus? Yeah. No, no, no. But that was not that. that's not it. Demons that were tormenting Lazarus. It's true. Yeah. The hell is created to torment the devil, not that the enemy will be the tormentor. Come on. The yeah is to punish the enemy not that but that's just my i don't know i've not seen but like i've not seen I've, i'm still open to rev to more revelation but i've not seen, seen it scripturally of that place that demons will be beaten i'm so, i know hell is a place of torment but the torment i know is by god and his angels not by the demons so i don't know so thank that, you that's so just much. My Hell is a place where the Bible says that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um, also to not even go into another dimension, because then you want to ask yourself if our physical bodies are the things that are most combustible. What is the extent of fire to a soul? And that's why the Bible was talking about you get into a lake of fire, but the real pain is the weeping and I mean is the is the weeping. Not weeping and like it's separation struggling. from God, yeah. Exactly. And eternal the separation of the, the from God. Eternal separation. Guys, you don't know what that feels like. <laughs> you can never know. The moment where everything around you says there is no hope. Oh, you everything Eternity. around you says there is no hope in continuum. No ray of hope, no ray of light. And all you can think about is I could have made this boat, I could have made this trip. I could have made this righteousness. It was within my hand. It was sold to me. It was told by my mother. My friends told me about it. I even engaged it in a bit, but I chose to live in carnality. That 
is deep. No, see, nobody can console you from that. So the concept again of fire, right? May I feel like more than the fire? Don't be a, a, afraid of fire because your flesh is going to is is going to is on earth in any case. But your soul is the one that it will be like fire to the body. That's what it is for me. I, I interpret it as yes, there will be fire because the Bible says it's a lake of fire. But the pain, the anguish, the regret will be like fire. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Pio. Um, somebody said something here. Uh, I love somebody asked the question. He said the thing about the book of life. Actually, that's scriptural because it says you give accounts. Everybody will give accounts. So one of the things I realized is that when we get to every ain't nobody getting, ain't nobody having amnesia for whatever reason. <laughs> Because if you look at Luke 10, 20, he says, do not rejoice that the Spirit submits to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So there is yes. some, there's, there's, there's records, some, there's, there's yes. that. Okay? So some don't understand. So we have to explore, Pastor Emmanuel, that's the next thing. We're going to look at that. But you see, if you think about heaven and hell as a, imagine, we've talked about, so imagine eternal bliss with God. Eternal bliss. He says, there will be no more pain, no more war, no more, no more no dollar, issue. no more it's airway. About, there will be AC. No, it's it, see, guys, street of gold. Imagine this one that we're worshipping in George. As you imagine that, for lack of better, for, no, those married, ecstasy. No, it's nothing compared to that. Then even if you're in church, you're worshipping God. That you are gone, your your your, your life, your head want to burst. Like some, your your head is floating in the sky. Imagine. By the way, we need to talk about eschaton. One of the things we're going to do, Pastor Emmanuel, please just note, we need to come back and talk about eschaton because esch eschatological views impact even how we engage life. What do I mean by that? This issue of tribulation before, tribulation after, then we want to, um, uh, we're coming back, one third, we're coming to rule again. So, I mean, imagine that me i say whatever jesus that ride with god for eternity that is what you should put before you right that is what you should put before you and that should be what fuels evangelism ladies and gentlemen do you want anybody to be eternally separated from god like that that should fuel intercession for those that are not saved that should fuel because you see, even this idea of being saved, and we just think I will just take salvation, I leave certification. You did not even come into the if you and if you experience the the Bible says the goodness of God causes men to repentance. You you experience the goodness of God, it changes you. Okay, I have a last one more question there, but if you have a question, please ask before we wrap up tonight. How many are you enjoying tonight's conversation? This question says, Good evening. I've heard people say homosexuals are ex essentially demon-possessed and they discard the idea of social conditioning being a factor. And they discard... They are not demon... It's the lust of the flesh. I'm telling you. I don't... If that's the case, even... Have you seen people that are... Have you seen... Have you met a, a man or people that they can't keep... Their body count is uncountable. There are people like... They are driven by sexual desires. And I say it's just the enemy also trying to amplify one sin over the other. And the church should not fall for that. We will stand our ground. And it, it's, it's as if the more the devil is saying that, yes, people are just shouting, oh, gay, oh, no, my God, homosexual. They are, he's increasing and they're coming up with all manner of things. So it's okay, great. Great. It's not the, it's the, great. Is that the struggle? There's grace, there's, there's, there's provision for it. I don't, be, I believe that. People will call it different things because the same way they don't understand what it is. I believe that every sin is an oppression. Is every sin is a perversion, is an oppression. All right? Exactly. For the are not possessed. That's what I'm saying. People that they can't, anything scares, they, they lose their senses. So is there a place where, well, what I've seen, what I know, if you're a child of God, if you've given your life to Christ, what the enemy will use against you as what the enemy will keep seeking as a gateway to your life are the idols and the lust of your heart. Hear me. Did is the if you are crazy about fame, you'll get there. If you are crazy about money, 
mammon ego day day. If you are crazy about power, ego day day. If you are crazy about marriage, ego day day. Whatever, if you are crazy about what respect, it will be there. If you are crazy about control, it will be there. If you are crazy about su spookiness, supernaturalness without the word, see, eh? deception, God forbid, is not your portion. So, what am I saying? The idols of your heart, you see, that lust of the eye, pride of life, lust of the flesh, we will unpack it in one of the feeds. You have no idea. Some of us think it's just fornication. No, the most, the, the, let me give an example. I was teaching last week. I said, Brother David, that saw lady outside, and he just, see, yeah, he, got, uh -huh. he saw a woman, he slept with her. The lust and desire for batch, that, that, that consumed him, he would do anything. To preserve himself, preserve his name, even though he was drowning in sin. So much so that when they came to tell him that there's a man that did this, look at how David got up. If there's any prayer you want to pray for yourself, it's the blindness to you. Like you can see everything but yourself. David was he, he was ready to, he said, kill them. Who out there? Nita says, sorry, sir. A week, me, sir, Emma Binu, you are the one. Before he calmed down. What am I saying? So the one of these guys is perversion. I know someone that said, again, the enemy also trying to destroy the destiny. Look at the enemy trying to kill, massacre children, destroy the enemy's life of children. Children that they tried to abort them, they were aborted and they did not die. So there are all manner of things. The devil is just, you know, don't forget, he will always try to bruise, he will always be looking at going after the seed of a woman. Why they bring up? Someone shared with me about how the entire family, you know how people, they say, you look at a child growing up and be saying, ah, you know, just baby like a girl. It's not as a girl, yo. Or begin to use what it's not as a boy, yo. And some funny things. I was speaking into the identity of a child. Then some people were abused. But I've seen people that they were not abused. Nothing. And guess what? Can I tell you what? In this day and age, conditioning. We, there's so much in the media that is beginning to make people feel that this is normal and is increasing the devilish desires in the heart of men that this is okay. So that's another thing we're contending with our age. So I don't think it's just a, oh, they are demon possessed. Then every, every thing is possessed. Was, they are fornicators, they are liars, they are murderers. They are all manner of wicked human beings. That, but I believe every sin is, is like a death sentence and an and, and oppression of the enemy. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Is there any other question before we go tonight? Anybody want to share? What's your take home tonight? What are you gaining from this? What do you need to go to heaven, be saved, accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Sanctification. Now, Pastor Emmanuel, question. They said, you, you go to heaven, ladies and gentlemen, is step one. Have you heard that thing about you? May you not go to heaven, I'll do, I'll be the, <laughs> there's always, I don't know where it's going to say that you'll be my God. However, looking at the parable that God rewarded people by what they did, there is reward system in heaven, no. Please, Pastor Man, of this do come out. There is God talk about mansion in heaven. In my father's house, there's mansion. There is mansion, no. There is reward, though. And there is the there is crown. Please, Pastor Man, what do you have to say about such? Anybody have a question in that light? So don't, <laughs> I don't salvation I... gather us to heaven. Alas. <laughs> Okay, ma, I think I'll go back to what James said. Faith without what is dead. Now, um, um, and there's a, there's a Ephesians 2 that says that um, he predestined us unto good works. He says that we have been recreated in Christ and he predestined us unto good works. Then Hebrews chapter 6 says that, um, talks about the foundational principles of faith. He calls on repentance from dead works. And faith towards the living God. Why am I starting with this? We are called to walk. But the work we are called to do is a walk from the place of rest. Is a walk of faith. He says we walk by faith. That is walk. 
but it can also mean walk by faith and not by sight. What does that mean? When a man is walking the works of faith, because like, for example, if I tell you there is a billion naira in VI, for example, Mm. if you say you believe me, that's one step. But the person that truly believes me is the person that runs the fastest to VI. And the person that starts carrying the... So faith, you believe in a message shows in your actions. Your level of faith and your actions are tied together. And that is what James mm. was saying. In the explanation James was giving, he was telling you about Abraham. Hebrews tells you, that Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, but he had already received Isaac back from the dead, believing that God is able to raise Isaac up. So Abraham, when God told him to sacrifice Isaac, did not just say, I believe you, God. He took Isaac early in the morning and walked that walk. It was a walk of faith. So mm. It is on that basis that reward is given. So even though Abraham, the father of faith, who believed in God that un- justified the ungodly, there were certain things he did based on that belief. One of the things he did was that he left his father's house. One of the things he did is that he lived in tents. One of the things he did is that he circumcised his children. One of the mm-hmm. things he did was, and as he was doing those things, God was coming to reaffirm his um, covenants to him. It's not like Abraham was working for that covenant. What the work Abraham was doing was he was believing, he was believing, he was believing. Mm. But as he was believing, he was doing something. It was those yes. things he was doing as a result of his belief that he was rewarded for. So, so that good. Is also, how we will be rewarded when we get to heaven. The things we do based on what we, based on how we believe or when and it will show so some people might leave jobs because they believe something some people might go to places because they believe something some people might reject some things because they believe something some people might you know another thing abraham did is that he refused the reward of sodom he says less uh, sodom says they made me rich i will not take even a shoe lap. so some people will reject some things and as they are doing those things, works of faith, they will be rewarded. Mm. They will be rewarded. I, and I just believe in it. That, so it's based on their faith in the salvation of God, their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. And as they mm. are exercising that faith, it will show by their action. Based on those Absolutely. things, they will be rewarded. So I, I just I, hope that brings a bit of clarity. Thank you so much. So there is a word. God says that we see it in the parable. We see, and it is not, and remember, it's a just God. Is he has given according to I love how Pastor Dami said it. It's not rewarding according to what you think you is according to the measure. Uh, it's not God is not judging us or asking us for account based on just you know that will make it unfair to a lot of people, you know. But it's according to the measure that is given unto us. So that is why I believe that there is reward for even sanctification in the sense that. The role for salvation is not just in heaven. Even from here, the level of intimacy you enjoy, the ability to understand what salvation has offered, to maximize it, you know, to know how many of you have paid for a premium of a thing, but you only use a part of it because you didn't really understand it. You didn't read the full, you didn't read the manual, you know, the discipline of reading the manual, all these things that we are signing up. We just say, I agree, I agree, I agree. And that's why you say, you shout that they are selling your, they are selling your data, but you agree to them selling your data and all the cookies you are accepting. You know, so you see that process of reading the manual, that process of engaging is what we can liken to sanctification, meaning okay. your daily growth to be more like Christ and to know him and be with him. I hope that answered the question. Aka, we take you. Any other question before we go tonight? Oh, no, ma'am. Um, it's not a question. I just wanted to add to the um, reward, um, you know, talk right before Pastor Emmanuel spoke, but <laughs> as Pastor Emmanuel speaking, in fact, he nearly could come out waiting in my head. <laughs> um, to understand that you know this reward system hello pastor Emmanuel? Where we, where we, where we you? okay okay so this reward system i want people to, like I, I like 
when people say reward in heaven, people need to understand that it's not only heaven we're going to live, but you have to remember that we're also now moving back to the new earth. So I don't know the full context of how that reward will play out, but I believe that it will make sense because when people say, ah, if I is only crown that they are giving us star on the crown, Shebi, we are all in the heaven on the street of gold. I don't care. Uh, we are moving back to earth, though. So just <laughs> keep that in context. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it, if Jesus gives us so sev several things that we can do that indicates that, you know, the, the what you do in this life will matter in how yeah. well you live in the next yeah. life. Jesus said we should so store good. up riches. We should store mm. up riches. When you give here, in fact, Jesus said, when you give to the poor, you give to me. It will, yeah. the interest will, will the interest go matter. Absolutely. It will matter, it will grow compound interest. You know, so our actions on earth will determine our life or the quality of life we live life. on the new earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. the idea is not just to want to go to heaven. And in fact, one of the arguments of theologians have, even when they're arguing about eschaton, even for example, the issue of um um when i mean eschaton and esch eschatology is this idea of the year after what happens after here or what's the what's the theology about rapture after here what's happening she we were going there so let the world destroy why are we taking care of the earth and why are we still wording she be and one of the arguments is if god was about just rapture then at the end of the day when we give our life to christ you should go to heaven immediately if it was just about you coming to heaven sharp sharp when you gave your life to Christ, you should be unguano. You have done this deed. Oh yeah, boom. Why are we still here? One to evangelize, so so that the the mandate of Genesis one can be fulfilled. Replenish the earth. God is and guys, Bible is interesting. Let me give an assignment to us. Whenever we have this conversation again, by the grace of God, if you go and read the book of Revelations, I want to believe Revelations. Let me tell you that one. You will see. You know, somebody was like, "Hey, wait." wait. You see that there's is there another temptation for those of us that come back and say, we'll look at it. Who is he really talking about? But there is a rule. There's a millennium rule. There's a coming back to rule. There's a new Jerusalem. There's a new city. There's there's fun. Things are about to get really fun and exciting, you know? So there's a lot more. So even the heaven where we we think that we're just going to sit there, well, well, let me just cross my leg and walk on the street of gold, you know? And again, the good thing is that these things we, will, we know in part, it will continue to on um, bail i'm not i'm not, i'm not one that want to just you know break my head and finish everything because of i want to just be able to say this is what it is i'm open to learn if you read revelations chapter 20 21 mm. hey let me give you one revelations 20 says then i saw an angel coming down from heaven um i'm coming I saw an angel coming out from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit, a heavy chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, the old serpent, who is the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for ten, a thousand years. Bless they go release him again. <laughs> bound him for a thousand years. The angel threw him to the bottomless pit, which was, it was then shut and locked, so the devil could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years were finished. After a thousand years, afterwards, he must be released for a little while. Again. Then I saw thrones. And the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge. So you can go on and on to read. See, listen, man. At the end of the day, that's why for me, I want to, where Jesus is, is where I want to be. I just want to pursue, get to know him, grow, give your life to Christ, and give his certification. But that thing Aka said is so true. It's scripture. The Bible says, store up treasures. Let's see exactly the scripture. And we'll wrap up with this. Um, if there's any other question, please put it in. How many of you are blessed by this? Show with smileys and what you're gaining. Uh, okay. He <laughs> said, do not, Matthew 6, 19, 21. Do not stop treasure for yourself on earth. Where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in. But store up treasure for yourself in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in. Let me use Pastor's translation to read this. What does this show you, ladies and gentlemen? Store up treasure. Why will it tell you to store up treasure? There's something about how you live here. 
And this is where it balances out this grace message of it doesn't matter what you do. It, it, it's just about Christ has paid the price. Yes, he has. And I'm like, are we seeing it? That a lot of people are even working a bit. I remember in a bit to correct errors. Sometimes we create more errors. People create more errors because sometimes the bit to create error is coming from a bitter place and disgruntled place. And sometimes anger and sometimes bitterness, sometimes church earth, and sometimes lack of understanding. I watched this video by Pastor Mensah. He said some of the things people are shouting, like, wow, Rema, is some errors that a generation has discarded. Some people go again, dig it up, bring it back, and it sounds like new revelation. Know your Bible. Revelation 6, 19. 19 says, do not keep ordering for yourself earthly treasure that can be stolen by thieves. Matthew Material wealth eventually rust, decay, decays, and loses value. Instead, stockpile every treasure for yourself that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose value. For your heart will always put you what your value as your, as your treasure. Now, if you look at it, every treasure are eternal realities, such as loving others, doing good, revealing truth, bringing Christ to the lost. None of this treasure can be stolen or ever lose their value. Why would they say that when a sinner gets saved, there's rejoicing in heaven? There's, there's reaction. There's a chain reaction between here and there. And that's what the Bible says. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is lose in heaven. That's what the Bible says. Um, when you pray, our Father, you know, let your will, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So there is, there's a ripple effect of how we live here. Because in any case, why would people go to hell? Is what they did here that carried them go hell there. So that means whatever you do here too, there's something. There's a ripple effect. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So tonight, we've been able to continue our conversation on salvation, to see what that means, to understand why we do some things we do, to understand the concept of once saved, forever saved. That it's not just a case of yes or no, but understanding the full context of things. To so understand that what Christ has done with salvation, we can never pay for it. Your good works will never do it. To so understand what James was saying about good works. It's not good works to get saved, but now that you are saved, let your action, it's not even your action trying to sustain your salvation either, but let your action, let it declare of the saving grace you are enjoying. And that is why if you have enjoyed this grace, go out there. That is the premise of our evangelizing, telling people like, come and enjoy this which I'm enjoying. And you don't want your soul to go into eternal damnation. And we're going to have so much fun with Jesus. Oh my God. We're going to have so much fun. You think all this epic movie, uh, epic? We're going to have so much fun. By the way, this is not a battle between devil and God. If he's about that, the devil is gone. Like God is having so much fun. And it's like, these are my children that will deal with you. Like, God is having so... Like, you don't understand. It's not a battle between devil and... No, 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 no. The, the, this movie, the end is already confirmed. God is just... God do, I beg. You know? And God will help us all in Jesus' name. So can you say a word of prayer?